What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Of course, I'm Gareth from Park Cameras, as I am every time, and this time we're taking a look at this. It's the new, just announced Fujifilm 18mm f1.4. It's an XF lens. F1.4 is always an exciting aperture to play around with. 18mm, of course, on an APS-C camera, so I was using the X-T3 with this, which is still a great camera, by the way. It's nice to use that and be reminded how good that is. Of course, 18mm, like I say, APS-C camera, so it's roughly the full frame equivalent of around 27 millimeters, roughly, which is actually a very all-rounder kind of focal length. You know, it's just under 35 mil, so it's a little bit wider than that, obviously, and then it's a little bit tighter than your kind of 24 mil range. I actually found myself really liking it. This is great for landscape, great for street photography, absolutely. Obviously low light stuff, star shooting you could do with this. And then obviously portraits as well. With that nice fast aperture, you can get some really lovely outer focus areas, some really lovely blurred backgrounds to your portraits. Yes, it's gonna be a bit wider, even than 35 mil, which is normally about the widest I shoot portraits. But actually, this is great for all kinds of all rounder stuff, including of course, video as well. Now, let's talk about the image quality first of all, then we can come on to how this lens feels, but spoilers for that. This is a small, lightweight lens. It feels good, it feels extremely well made, and it's fun to use. But we'll get onto that in a bit. Let's talk about image quality. Now you get those beautiful Fujifilm colors, of course. And using the X-T3, there's film simulation modes. Lovely. I've gotta say, the images coming out of this lens, really, really nice. I'm not that surprised, because XF lenses tend to be very nice anyway. And this is a nice focal length. F1.4, of course, looks fantastic. The bokeh, I think, is very smooth. It's very pleasing. And of course, this is a great focal length, like I say, for all kinds of different things. Landscape, street, loads of stuff. You're getting nice, sharp images with this lens. You know, even if you're shooting completely wide open, nice and sharp, nice and whoo, nice and crisp. And then you got those beautiful colors. Like I say, I didn't find myself having any kind of problems with distortion or anything with vignetting or anything like that. It just seemed to be very, very nice. Very easy to kind of play around with in post as well, in Lightroom and Photoshop and stuff like that, but absolutely straight out of camera. These look fantastic. Now, in terms of autofocus, this was working really well. I was using it with the X-T3, like I mentioned before. No issues with hunting, whether I was doing portrait stuff, landscape, it didn't matter. No issues with hunting at all. It was able to snap on pretty quick and just sort of work as I wanted it to, which is essentially exactly what I want an autofocus system to do. So no issues there with this particular lens. But let's talk a little bit about what this is like to actually shoot with. What is it like to actually use? Well, of course it comes with this lens hood. Let's take that off for a second. You can see this is a very small, lightweight lens. I mentioned that earlier in the video, but it really is very nice and, and small and light. You know, it balances so well on the front of these cameras, the X-T3 in this case. It doesn't feel front heavy. You know, it feels extremely well kind of rounded and balanced as a setup, which is really, really nice. I always appreciate that. That's a good construction on this lens. Now we've got an aperture ring on the lens itself, which I always appreciate. I always think that's a nice thing to be able to use. It doesn't have a D-click option, which I think is a shame because, you know, no, personally, I actually use the click. I always use the click because I just like the tactile feel of that. But I know some people will want to D-click it. So it's a shame there's no D-click option, but like I say, I don't know if it's that big a deal. Depends, it's a personal preference, I suppose. Otherwise though, you've just got the manual focus ring, which is actually nice and big, especially considering the size of the lens. You know, it takes up a decent amount of real estate without being ridiculous, and it's well-weighted as well. So if you want to do manual focusing, whether that's photography, video, whatever it is, you've got a good option there. And otherwise, like I say, there's nothing else actually on the lens in terms of control. It's a very sort of sleek operation here. No switches or buttons to kind of clutter it up at all. Now this lens obviously is great for all kinds of stuff. It's a great all-rounder, but it's also gonna be very good for things like events, weddings, that kind of stuff, because the focal length is very kind of all-roundery. And then you've got a very fast aperture for that low light. So if you haven't got great lighting, you don't have to worry about it. F1.4 is really gonna help you out in that situation. They gather so much light. You know, same goes for shooting kind of after sunset and actually shooting star shots as well. So for night sky photography, this is gonna be fantastic. Yeah, it's not as wide in terms of the focal length as maybe you would normally shoot a night sky thing with stars and stuff like that. But it's absolutely gonna get the job done. You're gonna be able to get some great stuff with it. I've really enjoyed my time using this lens. It's, it's such a fun, creative focal length because it's such a good all-rounder. You know, you head out to do some landscape, but you might do some portraits, some street, who knows? It's such a good all-rounder for that kind of thing. It just allows you to really concentrate on things like composition, you know, you, the actual shot, the moments you're capturing, all that kind of stuff, rather than focusing on what lens you're gonna be using or changing lens and stuff like that. I've really enjoyed, it's a very fun kind of photography 
lens, but video as well, absolutely. So it's a great focal length for shooting video because it just works very well whether you're shooting handheld or popping on a gimbal or something like that. It's a great, just a great focal length for getting some nice shots, you know, around that kind of 35 mil feel, but just a little bit wider. So you get some nice wide shots. Of course, if you have any questions, pop them down in the comments. There's also a link down in the description so you can go and check out this lens for yourself pricing, all that kind of stuff. I tend not to mention pricing in these reviews because it can change over the over the months or the years or whatever, but absolutely check that out down in the description. If you've got a Fujifilm camera, this is gonna be a fantastic addition to your lens lineup. And like I say, any questions, pop them down in the comments, but I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. Anything, you know, thoughts on the focal length, the aperture, this lens in general, anything and everything, I'd love to hear it down in the comments, of course. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Of course, we've got great stuff all the time, reviews and tutorials, but it's also just a personal favor to me. You know, it really, really helps me out. I appreciate that a huge amount. I will, of course, see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.